for a common goal. And I'm very passionate about the youth and uplifting them. So adding that ingredient of not only are we doing this, but creating a bridge for the generations coming after us. They need our guidance and our support as they become artists, as they become bankers and lawmakers. We want them to have positive minds while they're doing those things. So I hope that answers the question. You're watching Project Forward. Go to projectforward.tv and become a member today and discover the world we created to support healthy creativity. Oh, I'll do it again. HWC 2017, pre about four o'clock in the afternoon. We're over here. I'm gonna watch it off because um, even though I think me and Kevin came up with the idea at the same time. In the living I, room. What's that? In the living room. Exactly. That's why Kevin will go second he gets the dope position. <laughs> you find some. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm just going to talk for like three minutes about uh, being a poet and what I think that means right now. Because uh, I think that goes a long way to understanding why we create art anyway, you know. Because it can seem like a pretty passive thing to be creating art, um, but it is definitely not. And I understand the road of poetry, I'm sure everyone understands their own thing. But when I first started writing poetry, um, I was young, right? But I didn't think about it as poetry until I was like 18. Now I think about poetry as even a completely different thing than I did then, even though I've always had the passion to like do it and pursue it. Um, but yeah, I think that change is dependent on you know the community that I'm in. And then as to why I do, I've been doing one poetry book a month for the last five months is because it's given me the opportunity. Um, to go through the different ideas and figure out their purpose. I, I think that ideas have three parts. There's the blueprint, right? That's your thoughts and your mind. They're, they're circling around this concept. We're always having new um, blueprints in our head, different ideas of the way our things are gonna get out there. That is the forever, right? Um, but they get elevated on the second level, which is when we start turning our blueprints into things. We start manufacturing, you know, we start creating real objects of our things, whether that is a class, whether it's a book, whether it's a event, whether it's a video or whatever. We're turning our things into different ideas. And if you're a poet, the easiest way for that is books, of course. And I did my first book when I was 24, Launched it, some friends bought some, and um, I was really cool on that. That was the model, right? You put out a book, you've kind of done it. But not anymore, because books are so easy to make, you know? Um, so while I realized the purpose of getting my thoughts out there, now, with the ability to make the thing, what drives the next iteration of whatever it is that you're making, whether it be a book or product, is the purpose. I had the first purpose was just getting my stuff out there, and that was super easy, you know? Um, way easier than it's ever been in time, and I was able to make my thing into a thing. But that didn't satisfy my purpose, and I didn't really know what that was, but I started reaching for it after this first book. Um, and so I started reading a lot more poetry, and that was my next iteration, and I got to get feedback. People would hear the poems, I would see their faces as I was reading things like that. Um, and that helped me get to the point where I am right now, where now I'm creating even more iterations because each one teaches me more about what it is that I'm doing. And I think when you start letting your purpose guide your next model, um, which is just good consumer empathy, you should know what your people are thinking. When you start letting it guide, especially in poetry, I think that that changed the way that I write. It changed the fact that I started writing um, 
for a certain group and what I knew they were going to feel and to try to accomplish some feelings that were more understandable and fit into things. Now that I write poems for actual events, I'm writing them for the energy of the room and for my energy at the time relating to all the chaos that is going on um, in my universe and the order that I'm implementing upon it. Oh, this is good stuff. I'm going to be able to watch this back <laughs> and be blessed myself. Uh, but finally, um, now, uh, where I'm at with um, my poetry, it can kind of be explained in the fact that I'm going to do a collaboration for the expansion tour that I'm on with Mr. Composition. And these poems are going to be um, read specifically, not just for a certain group, but also to create more atmosphere around the troops that we're going on so people can follow along. Anyway, I say all this to say, because I'm not even close there yet, to, to really getting to the final purpose, you know, that will allow someone to read it and become inspired in the exact way um, that I'm thinking. So I'm not there yet, but all this to say, I think that is the path. Um, and I think when you follow it, well, let me not say path, so Jesus would say, that's, that's the strategy, that's the process. And when you implement steps in this process, I think it does take you to, it allows you to sell more, because it's fitting more into people's lives. And selling is just, you know, other people investing in, in the value you've created for one reason or the other. And it teaches you to be more empathetic with your products and, and to take yourself out of them um, with your art and to take, take yourself out of them so that you can realize that they belong to a lot of other people and more people when you think about um, who exactly that kind of person is. Yeah. So, write more, create more, and deliver it more to the consumer and in lots of different ways so that they can enjoy it and you can be about what it is that you're doing. And don't be limited at all in, in, in the actual creation. I think the best thing is to realize that ideas in your head don't matter um, because they're existent just off of who you are and let the iteration, the creation process be more of the time that you're spending, especially in 2017 when making is just becoming easier, especially with poetry. I mean, it's way too easy. Poetry to books, it's too easy. Um, and then with everything else too, canvases are easy to get. It's cheaper than it used to be. You don't have to kill a pig and shave him and hang him in your yard for 30 days. Or I don't know how they make canvases. But, uh, <laughs> is there a pig on it? Skins. But, uh, yeah, anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think super, super fast making uh, and then structuring, the, then it becomes structuring the way that your products are in lots of different ways and so that people can see them and get in there and, and you can be built up off the value of the value that you're creating. Blah! HWC, oh wait, I'm going to have to cut out the little because that's not going in. <laughs> HWC 2017 Holiday Writers Convention. Before we get across, this is Kenya. Four days to go, this is just the top of it. If this ends in a really crazy way, this will be like the perfect documentary ending. Like, during it, aliens arrive or something, or some other spaceship lands. You're like, oh my gosh. It would have to, no, it can't be a spaceship. If Tom Hanks came to the last day, and then he brought other celebrities, and we all started. I don't know, we, we all like ended up on a bus to New York for no reason. I don't think we can do that. It's not there while his kids and Lena has work. <laughs> it's like, no, yeah. That's true. Kids can ride buses too. So that's cool. Oh, sure. That was purpose. So that third part is purpose or vision. Um, and then letting that guide, 
let your iterations guide your ideas because they're chaotic and they're going to exist all over the place, but they need to be wrapped up in iterations and creating. And then let your creating be wrapped up in the purpose why you're creating it. And I think that you find just authentically by implanting yourself in, in communities that are doing what you want to do. Wow. And there are a lot of them, despite what's going on. Um, like in politics, there's a lot of actual small groups, and you really, really dive deeper and deeper and deeper into your community, into the artists in your community, then it, it just gets crazy. It, it gets crazy, it gets really cool. And a really dedicated and constant collaborative group of 50 creators is enough to sustain itself. It really is. The buy-in created and the reinvestment that will occur um, will be enough value even to leverage your activities in other ways, like going to other people's events and, and um, buying groceries at H-E-B. It's getting a little abstract there, but... <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. I like questions. That's kind of like the... the metaphor right there. Question. Yeah. What would you say or do you have anything that inspired you to be writing or do you write your question? Is there anything that you use for inspiration? Yeah. I think though that it's pretty loose. It's kind of like you with head wraps, you know. You don't know why you make the next head wrap exactly, but you're in it for me. Even making one head wrap is, you know, an astronomical leap. So it's hard to do it from the external, but you have stuff that you do. So my poems are arise out of me being a poet, you know. And then I think that's where I have to take the responsibility. I'm, I'm blessed with my passion, which is to write poetry. So now it's my responsibility to focus that passion into different things. What makes this model better than the next? In basic ways, like for poetry, it's like what makes my poem better? Am I, you know, getting better as a writer? Which means a lot of different things. And I'm sure for head wraps, what makes your head wraps better? You say objectively better fabric, better things, and stuff like that. And then vision. Why? What is my vision? Is my, you know, the cool vision with head wraps is like I see, you know, women wearing head wraps. All oh, I see 80 percent of women wearing head wraps 20% of the time. And then that, wrapping your idea of creating around that kind of vision gives you the power to be like, all right, what does that mean? I'm making a night head wrap, right? So, or I'm making, these are day wraps. This is a, this is a brunch wrap. This is the brunch head wrap for ladies. <laughs> you know, so it takes the idea of creation to a whole, I'm giving you guys magic right now, but it's a breakfast. <laughs> but that's actually really cool. More questions? From the two. We can show that there's only two. I was thinking about lying somewhere in the video that there were like hundreds of people. So in the cheers, the, the fake cheers. Yeah, but it's actually unnecessary because when I put the video online and it gets views, people will immediately like, oh, there were two people there. But if you see that 500 people watched it, they're like, oh. Anyway, but um, yeah, so just take security in the now. Are we secure? Do we believe in ourselves? Yes, we do. We do. I know that we do. No room for doubt on that one. We have confidence abundantly. Okay, great. Um, I'm gonna let you do yours, but I have to run really quick. Um, Cool, this is great. Awesome, all right, good, it doesn't sound that bad. I just want to thank you guys personally, I'm sure I'll to meet you right after this, for coming out. This is really great, frankly, super awesome. For you guys watching live or whatever, um, the live streams at Black, Black, uh, Black Writers of Soul, it's inspiring. I'm sure you guys are equally great. I think this is gonna be fun. What else can I say about Frankie? Frankie's passion for, I think, education and just for natural
actual skills of organizing and uh, keeping herself organized kind of radiates out of her. She enters the space and owns it. I call her the sheet ninja because every day she shows up with like 30 different sheets. Like super helpful. It's like this, this, and this. And like before you know it, the meeting's over and you like hit all of your accomplishments. You're like, whoa! When I go into meetings, I just bring my like voice and I'm like, all right, guys, do you get the idea? No, it's more like this. And I'm like, freaking just kills her with her sheets. She's even brought her sheet into the event with the no space is safe from Frankie's sheet engine. It always takes it up a whole nother level. There's, there's even more stuff, I'm sure we'll take pictures. She's not done. Frankie with a printer is a bad thing. She said she bought a printer and was worried to the world and her own budget. Her ink budget is going to skyrocket. <laughs> She's going <laughs> to be sitting in there making all these world changing sheets. <laughs> Um, yeah, definitely. Definitely check her out on Facebook, like Frankie Michelle, and Instagram. And uh, yeah, I'm going to keep watching your, your, your journey. And I'm excited for this panel that I'm sure you'll enjoy. So thanks again. Awesome. Thank you so much for that amazing introduction. It was super fun. <laughs> introduction. I'm really excited to be here with all of these dynamic leaders. And we're here because of leadership. And as a writer, it's really a solitary art. Would you guys kind of agree? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you get to the paper, and it's just you, it's your words, it's your truth. And, you know, you feel like, well, I have often felt like it's kind of an alone space. And that's what it's meant to be. It's you sharing your story on the paper. But um, to get your work out there takes leadership skills. And that's why I felt that it would be really, really important to have a conversation with on leadership at this writers' conference, and leadership that is effective is has got to be really well because it'll radiate, it'll attract people, it'll be magnetic, and it'll be the kind of leadership that is creating something that is useful for the community, that is community based. Um, and so that's why I brought some of my favorite people in Texas who I find are really amazing dynamic leaders doing awesome things. Um, in their industry, and so let me go ahead and introduce these amazing people. We have um, Lalo and Carmen from the Writing Compass, and these amazing women started off organizing a women's writing group in San Antonio called Wild Mind. And so through Wild Mind, they created this dynamic concept called the Writing Compass, which is an accountability program, and um, it has, um, they did a soft launch, and now it is, has a full launch in January. The program will resume. It's a 13-week accountability program for writers. So if you have an idea in your head, and you're not sure if you'll sit down and write every day, um, check out the Writing Compass at writingcompass.com. And um, I have Andrea Bocap here. She's an amazing poet and singer here in San Antonio. She does awesome work. She does workshops for you. She puts on amazing events in San Antonio. She's been out here for years just creating amazing art. And because of her incredible organizing, I just had to have her on the panel as a leader. And we have um, the Leadership Curve. We have Kimberly and Coach, and they are with the Leadership Curve, and they're um, strength is, how would I say it? I would say that, that their brand is leadership with love. That they are out there um, doing keynote speaking and consultation with, with organizations, with businesses, and helping leaders create teams that are dynamic and effective. And um, you can check them out at creationperk.com. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So we're going to go ahead and start with the questions. It's going to be a short panel. It will be about 10 minutes of questions that I have for the panel. And then we'll see if there's any questions from anybody on Facebook. Okay? All right, guys. So what does leading with love mean to you guys? Um, can I get, can you, would you be able to pass the mic around? Okay, you guys got it? Okay. Let's go ahead and turn on my side of the creation of the curve. So, give me the question one more time. I got lost. I'm sorry. 
What is leadership with love? Uh, from my perspective, it's largely the thought and the, the motive behind your leadership. Why? Leadership is simply moving people from one place, from, from point A to point B. That's my favorite definition of it. But what's the thought and the feeling behind that? Is it self-motivation or is it a genuine caring to see not only your own aims achieved, but also growth in the aims of people who are who you're leading with as well? Yeah, and I would just add, specifically for writers, as you were saying, it can be a really solitary thing, which is why I don't write more, because I'm super extrovert and I have a really hard time sitting my ass in the chair and just doing the work. Um, but having your tribe around you is really important for writers, and so sometimes you have to create that, and that is an act of leadership. And I think leadership with writers also looks a lot like mentoring or sharing, like, I learned this, do this, don't do that, that did not work. And so we can help each other reach our goals, even though at the end of the day, you have to sit down and look at the screen and, and be in your own space. Um, there's a lot of ways that we can bring people into that to create. To me, leadership in the writing community looks like service. In order to lead a community, you must serve the community. You must uh, feel, identify what the, the void is and look for resources and individuals who can. And even within yourself, how can you fill that void? And also, it looks like Leading by example, you can't pull a community together if you don't have your stuff together. If you don't have um, a body of work that represents what people should look up to and exemplify, if you um, are disheveled in, in the way you try to communicate and are, and are ineffective in communicating with people and have events where people come in and just like, this is chaos, I don't, I don't understand what's going on here. Um, and so just finding ways to be organized and to fill voids and to be nurtured. Well, um, I'm not sure I consider myself a leader quite yet. Maybe a baby leader since this is all very new to me. Um, I think our desire was we want to each other or something that we both wanted to do. We both had this desire to write. And we weren't quite sure how to get there on our own. And somehow in figuring out our own goal for the right word and which product, we came up with something that would help a lot of other people get to their own destination. Yeah, I would add to that uh, that for me, there's a lot of those generosity. And um, to me, what you like having passion in what you're doing and letting that. Um, convey to the people that you're serving and lifting people up and getting people excited about things that maybe they've um, suppressed or dampened or you know, there's sometimes there's this idea that I don't believe I can really do that um, or maybe I'll do it someday and so to get people to connect with how someday it can be today right um, and to to be uh, for us to be willing to have a kindness and a leading example, to be courageous in what we're, what we're doing, to be vulnerable, so to then create a space for other people to take those things to courage and vulnerability as well. Thank you guys. I really I, love, um, I took away a whole lot from that. I took away big, largely the, the service piece and um, creating things that are um, thoughtful, organized, and actually going to help. The next question that I have has to do with the fact that, um, well, I'm going to just ask the question. How do you say no when you should still show love? What does that look like? Well, I don't know if you can be an effective leader unless you are first taking care of yourself. Not giving everything away, which can sometimes be hard when you come from a, a place of giving service to others, um, which is uh, part of my background as a psychotherapist. And I used to work in the criminal justice system for many years, and the clients I worked with needed a lot, and it was hard to say no. And that 
ultimately you know, did me some harm in not standing up. Um, and so I had to learn how to do that to care for myself so I could be more effective for others. Uh, so that was a lesson, right? So and knowing that I'm actually more effective when I say no and I'm discerning about what I say yes to and I can show up 100% better by saying that yes to those things that serve not only the people I'm serving, but serve myself as well and I'm conserving my energy. So. I agree with the discernment, um, although that was a learned skill over time. I would also say, protect yourself, but also once you're responsible for a group of other people and their creative experience and you know, where you're trying to go and what you're trying to help them with, you, you do have to say you no know, in some instances to protect them. You know, now they're, they're almost like your responsibility and you're the one saying, okay, this is where we're going, this is how we're getting there. And you know, people are putting their trust in with you that it's going to be okay and if they keep following you. So, yeah. Okay, I'll make this quick. So, as, as I can, um, there's a couple reasons why to say no. One is because you feel that the person asking is undervaluing you as an artist or undervaluing the art or you're not representing the art correctly. Or, Overcommitment and fatigue. Um, very rarely do I just say no because I just don't want to do it. Some, somehow, don't get the best of me. I'm like, man, these people need help. Um, but when I do say no, it's not just a flat no, it's a, but I know someone who can help you. There is someone in the community who made it this opportunity to shine, be this platform, or just do the job better than me. There have been times when I'm like, I can't, I can't do this service properly but there are other people who are more fully equipped or the feel of them, their spirit, who they are, what they stand for and to could better um, represent your brand or whatever you're trying to promote and stuff. So I don't just send people packing away because I just think they're jerks and they're opportunists or something. I rarely ever do that. But I think even when you say no, you're like, well, I can share your flyer or maybe six months from now, a year from now, we can collaborate or there's some other way if I can't do the full job can I help you with this? Is there something I can, a phone call, I can make an email, I can send a flyer, I can share something that can, you know, facilitate or help you with whatever your cause is. Well, that's a, I think um, I agree with everything that's been said. I would just add to it that, um, you know, Ben, he has been saying for decades that you should teach what you embody and, or, and not teach things you don't. So I think as a leader, you have to also be a practitioner. That's something that I deeply, deeply believe. And so you can guess yourself out of practicing your art, whatever that thing may be, the thing that you're trying to believe in. So in, in your genuine desire to help people or just to experience fun things, um, I know a person wants to say yes to every single thing. And then I get to an end of a season and I haven't done the important things because I said yes to a lot of things that just seem fun or just I want to go to like me or I wanted to help someone or that sounded good in the moment. And so for me to be a good leader who is a practitioner of my art, I have to be pretty vigilant against my own like self-sabotage of, of just saying yes to things that are easier than art. Because art and writing and leading, they're, those are hard things. You know, um, sitting across from somebody and have a coffee on them and pick your brain for two hours, that's, that's an easy thing. I can say yes to that and not write anything, right? And so I think it's, it's that desire to make sure you keep your craft strong, that, um, you know, the, the no is just the honest answer. And I think sometimes what I do, because I don't like to say no, is I say yes, and then I, I know in my heart that it's really a no, and then that's disappointing and that's terrible leadership. And so, Try to make sure I can really say yes to what I'm saying yes to you as I grow as a human. So, people tell you I have no problem saying no to a lot of things. There are answers to the game with us as a couple, but uh, so, Kimberly and I actually operated as publishers uh, for a while back in the day with the North American uh, Day, the literary journal that uh, we found called Relief. And silly. He said, let's just make a journal, it'll be easy. It'll be fun, he said. It'll be easy, he said. 
And so, as, as part of that process, we spawned uh, a, a horror slash weird fiction anthology, which I was in charge of, called Coach's Midnight Night. And there's a very particular ethos, a very particular feeling and vibe that I wanted. And so I would have all of these writers submit science fiction. You know, starships and aliens and stuff. I'm like, bro, you can't fit a starship in a diner. You know, this is not the kind of party. And so I had to say, no, to a lot of folks who find, you know, better things for their work. And not the work was bad because some of it was great. But if it doesn't protect, you know, including some of the work would have not been true to the ethos and would not have been good for the rest of the community that I was trying to craft this vision. So not only do you have to think about yourself, you know, we also think about how is this affecting the community at large and is the vision being that? Thank you, thank you guys. Okay, so what were your biggest mistakes? What were your biggest mistakes in leadership early on? So a long time ago in the galaxy far, far away, I when I was in college, which now was like 20 years ago, which is really weird to say, because I'm still thinking I'm 29, but uh, I was in charge of an organization on campus that was, the start with seven people, and inside of you know, four years grew to uh, somewhere around three or four hundred people. We don't really know how many people we had because there were so many. And uh, it was a student ministry on campus. And because of the rapid growth, Dude, I couldn't do it all myself because I was a student too. And I, I placed people into leadership positions that, well, first of all, I was a student in college because so I didn't really know what I was doing either. But I put a few people into positions that I probably shouldn't have, you know, because I was scrambling so far for versus building into people first. And I learned that lesson later on and uh, started kind of a more of a training program to bring people up. In a more structured fashion, so we knew that the right people were doing the right That's what's fascinating, yeah. And there's no one's right. Okay, guys, we've heard a lot of really good stuff. Thank you so much. Do we have time for another question? I'm actually. Okay, we have time if you're just really quick. Um, this is the speed round. Let's do it. What are some of the top things? That leaders you admire are doing? What are some of the top things that you. Oh, I want to make sure this question makes sense and I can't waste any more time in speed round. Out of the leaders that you admire, what are the top things you see them doing? Being authentic, being vulnerable, and living when they're wrong. Definitely people who look far, far, far ahead, not just for today's generations, but how is this going to impact potential future generations? Fresh, innovative concepts and ideas that are always evolving, always coming up with this new thing, and uh, physically showing up to support others. Um, I'd say giving credit away. Leaders who are not always looking to make it about them and who easily think people like you're saying, and also um, call out the people who are creating the results for them on their team. And, uh, in terms of like the leaders that I really respect, are starting to see people not as meat machines as cogs in like this weird industrial you know, uh, machine that they think they all have. No, they're seeing people as miracles. And I think that's the thing that's making the difference in leadership, industry, name your industry, pick one. And we see people are seeing people as miracles, that's where you see growth, that's where you see innovation, that's where you see the amazing stuff happen. I just add that. I think leaders sometimes see their whole team as an extension of them, like they have like 12 robot arms. And I think a good leader sees their team as individuals and, and knows that those people make them better and invites their voice and their intelligence into the team so they have diversity of perspective. And so just to like add on to your meat thing, we um, just have this perception of leadership that once you're a leader, you should be in power, people should just do what you say. So that you only have one brain and you have like 12 hands. But what you could have is like six brains, so that's better. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for you.
So Progress Creos is a conglomerate of what I believe my function is on the earth. And that is pulling together the artists, the musicians, the educators, bringing our talents together, not just to have fun and entertain each other, but to really teach each other, share stories, and bridge that gap to the youth as well, because that's a missing link. So it's great that we have a lot of entertainers and artists making new jobs and money. If that was beneficial to our society, then we wouldn't be in the state that we're in. So what if artists got together to throw a show, not just to make money or just to pay their bills, but to give back to the youth in some way? to give them a voice because they are our next artists and critical thinkers and free thinkers in society. So I just hope to bring people together for a common goal and I'm very passionate about the youth and uplifting them. So adding that ingredient of not only are we doing this, but it's creating a bridge for the generations coming after us. They need our guidance and our support as they become artists, as they become bankers and lawmakers. We want them to have positive minds while they're doing those things. So, I hope that answers the question. That's progress. So, how does someone get involved? And I think that'll be okay. How does someone get involved? How does someone get involved in progress? Right now. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Wait for it. <laughs> right now, just by meeting me, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> just by meeting me, having a conversation, networking with each other, that's a, a huge part of our studios is being open minded. Um, building with each other and thinking of things, following through with those plans and, and bringing to life. So I plan events um, that, that just sprung out of me to create an opportunity for myself rather than waiting for someone to say, hey, you can hang your art up here or you can perform here. It's like, I've created this space in the room. And I've had a lot of help with that. Um, just saw some footage from an event that I did with Andrea up here earlier on the panel uh, called Social Sources and that was an amazing event. We had a lot of fun. Um, we rose, or we rose, raised, 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 we raised some money for um, my art club at school. So it was, it was great. It was, a, it was an awesome time. So just talk to me and see what you can, can do. So that's what progress is. Direct contact to the <laughs> 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 Did it. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you see 
that is focused, that is art-centered, that emphasizes educating a child, the whole child, the spiritual aspect of the child, the mental and emotional aspect of the child, the physical aspect of the child. Uh, working in the public sector now, it's extremely absent. Um, holistic and it's a detriment to children. So I see an education center. How that manifests itself, um, time will tell me. So that's kind of what I see. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Perfect. Cool. Thank you. Please clap for me. here in San Antonio because that's what I believe in a lot, um, the entertainment industry here. And I think as everybody starts to level up and selfishly near me, um, then <laughs> it allows for a greater media umbrella. And I think there's a lot of wonderful things going on in here. Very soon, you will uh, eclipse um, these mega guys in Atlanta and California. And everyone will say, the countdown city River City, okay, I'm going to hold that for later. But please give it up for our most wonderful missionary, uh, Ms. Jamie Tarazas. Thank you, thank you so much for having me. It's like super grateful every time I get a microphone in my hand and I get to impact people in a hopefully a positive way. Um, I want to say, you know, I just think you're amazing, the panel that were up here. I can't wait to watch the playback because there was so much great information. And you'll notice that I sit here and speak with people that have been around me very animated. Really tiny, thank goodness I'm tiny because I really read too much. But I wrote a lot. And all this, I kind of went a little bit of the Seinfeld episode, so I'm going to kind of hit a bunch of names that I'm going to find like tied all together. And this is all just kind of intuitively coming to me. But I think that um, when I can, when I can resonate with other individuals, human beings that are, I like to say, speaking my language, uh, I resonate with them and I'm so connected to all facets of my being. We have a mental body, emotional body, physical body, spiritual body. And because I realize I'm more than just this physical vessel, that keeps me that I all I like accessed and I and I stay centered at all the time. I'm very present in the moment. And that's really as a mindfulness coach, what mindfulness living being means is trying to be as much in the now as you possibly can. And the more I practice that, the more I got into what I like to call is my soul flow. And as a mindfulness coach, my main mission in life is to help individuals tap into their authentic self. So when I'm around people, I was over there on the couch, and I'm like those people at church or whatever, you know, they get all into it, or you're watching a TV show, or you're watching a scary movie, and you're like, ah, you're watching an enemy fight, you can't sit still. That's how I feel when I'm around like minded people. I get really excited, and I'm like, yes, yes, I hear you, I see you, I feel you. And so ultimately, I think one of the biggest epidemics, the thing that's sickening humanity, is the fact that we are not connected to our authentic self when we wear it on a mask. And I believe that you aren't able to tap into your power, passion, and purpose until you get real, real comfortable with knowing who you actually are. Like, know that self means so much to me now. 
and as a mindfulness coach, I act as a guide as I walk my path to knowing my true self and getting more comfortable in my own skin and not really caring what other people are going to think or they're going to like me because I understand that those that need to hear me and see me and they feel me will come to me. The rest I don't really have to worry about. So that's all of my projects, which I'll talk about here, and then I'll share my vision and then you guys can ask me questions. Um, I host a show called Rise Above, which you know has been a guest on, and this is where you guys can be of service to me. My show is I feature entrepreneurial women who have tapped into their power, passion, and purpose. Um, but I am now, I'm really excited because my format of my show is expanding and growing, and now I'm going to add segments like the Gentleman's Corner and give an opportunity for men to really have a spot like every single time. And I think it's important for us to show these gentlemen, men who are showing up in the world as good fathers, um, good partners, doing good in the community, and who are really walking the path of self-awareness. Mindfulness is about recognizing, it's being a very skilled observer of yourself. It's not really acting to everything in the world, but responding with it and understanding that there's a piece of you that's sort of in this picture outside of yourself and that we have control over our wellness the more we're able to master our emotions. And this is a practice, but you have to start getting curious about what do you, why do you think what you think? And why do you do what you do? And why do you want what you want? Why are you getting triggered? And let's get to the root of all this and get really curious. And as entrepreneurs, that's a really great skill to have, to always have, is to be curious, especially when it comes to learning not only about yourself, but about other people. And so that's one of the things as a mindfulness coach, my main mission really is to help people live a more balanced, mindful, love-filled life. And going back to the epidemic, the epidemic is a lack of self-love. I am about the self-love movement, man. <laughs> and my show, Rise Above, is about rising above our living ideas, rising above our fears, rising above the division, rising above the bullshit, rising above our trauma. As a mindfulness coach, I'm also here to help people really face their pain. We numb it, we suppress it, we repress it, we ignore it, we deny it, we do anything and everything to just lean into it. And self-love is about self-compassion. And that's something that a lot of us are lacking. So we have to sort of get this inner conflict and this inner war and this, this division within self and, and deal with that. And the more you're able to focus on that and getting yourself joyful and more at peace, the only way you really do that is to know all of yourself. And you have to love all of yourself, including those broken parts. And the reason why I care so much about healing this relationship with yourself, because I care about humanity as a whole. And I'm telling you guys, relation, I'm a relationship coach, a love coach, that's what I was doing. I call myself a mindfulness coach for that because at the end of the day, I don't care what it is you want to improve. You can come to me. I also have a fitness background as a goal. I'm struggling with my weight, or I'm, I'm really struggling with my mom, or I want a better relationship with my husband. All of this stuff is always going to come back down to becoming mindful. And this is a word you're going to hear more and more. But the reason why I want you to be mindful of yourself, because the more you love yourself, the more you can make decisions in all areas of your life from your highest self, which Amina was talking about, there is this, I call it the God seed within us, this space, you don't have to believe in any religion to just do some research on quantum physics, and there is this piece of us that's connected to the entire universe, and there's in this space is bliss and peace and intelligence and information and revelation, and, and, and oh my God, it's like, ah! And so I really am here to help people get to that place so they can have healthier relationships so that the divorce rate goes down and we can restructure and have to create new uh, ways of thinking. Um, we've been doing things in the same way for a really long time, especially when it comes to relationships and communication, and we're not taught these things. 
So my goal is to heal your relationship with self so that you can have healthier relationships with others, not just intimate partnerships, but in your work situation also. And then when you have healthy partnerships, you create healthy families, and healthy families create healthy communities, and then it just goes on and on and on. And right now, I'm very passionate about children. And so here's my bigger vision. I have my show, Lesla. By the way, I'm also, I also have a podcast called The Sacral Circle. And uh, I dealt with a lot of sex trauma. And interestingly enough, that's like a really big topic right now, which again is a deeper thing. We need to stop pointing the fingers. And there's a sickness, a sickness that we have, a sex wound that we have. And we really have to take a deeper look at it so that we can heal this stuff. So my bigger vision, my, my single uh, circle podcast is opening up a dialogue so that we can collectively and lovingly heal this trauma and face it and, and transmute it and then use it to you. We can use our pain to get stronger and then we can use those stories to help others get through their pain because you're like a little bright light of like hope and inspiration. And that's my ultimate goal is to empower people. So I have lots of different skills and things that I'm passionate about and I'm bridging them all together and here's my vision. The Mindfulness Network. I want to create a self-love movement in San Antonio. I'm gonna, I, I know I'm this little tiny person and I can think, oh, it's not insignificant, but I know that I can move together, united, we are stronger. And so I want to create ways and ripples effect, effect of like kindness. And, and so this mindfulness network gives me an opportunity to team up with other individuals where they can share, we can have a mindfulness marriage page. They go to mindfulnessnetwork.tv and then it's like, here's information on how to have a healthier mindful marriage. Here's some stuff on mindful parenting. Here's some stuff on mindful eating. Here's some stuff on mindful uh, how to, with money, like how to deal with money mindfully. And anything that you need, it is a, a network, a source, a plethora of information, blogs, videos, um, just positive content. We have so much negativity in the world, and so those of us that now have access within the internet is a beautiful tool. And so let us sprinkle as much optimism and positivity, inspiration, education, information, just like Amin was saying, this is the time for us to collaborate and share. And so that's my ultimate vision, is to create a network where people can go to and whatever type of mindfulness information, it's a source of self-love, it's a prescription um, where you can get information and inspiration to help you achieve your optimal self. Does anybody have? Any questions? Oh, I'm like, <laughs> you know, we have lovers, so I'm just helping you. And it's not in the way that we think. It's it's a very virtuous way. It's a self nurturing We need to have a balance. Everything in life, and it's not about like perfect balance. It's about harmony. And so there needs to be. We have decided somehow, especially females, not, not, not excluding males, but we put ourselves last. And it's like this badge of honor to be this martyr. And we have to have a balance of self-fullness, I don't want to call it selfish, self-fullness and selflessness, because life is about serving. But you have to, especially if you're a giver, and you're a helper, and you're a doer, and you're a humanitarian. Your biggest soul lesson will be to learn how to love yourself and so that you can restore yourself or revitalize yourself or re-energize yourself with the big work that you have here to do on this planet. You said that you were passionate about children. So I wanted to know what made you Okay, so hopefully I say this right. There is a program right now, it's called Ruler, R-U-L-E-R, and it's based on, uh, there's a you know, Yale University, has a uh, program in the division just that's, they're only researching emotional intelligence and compassion. And they implemented this Ruler program, it's an acronym, uh, to a thousand schools across the country. Um, and I've also know, uh, I've known of other mindfulness meditation groups that they created in some schools, especially inner city schools, where instead of going to detention, they're taken there instead and taught how to process this. And I, I kind of jumped away from the, the children thing, but we expect our kids, we expect a lot from our kids that we don't even honor our own selves. Okay? Like, 
parents are super stressed and agitated, and we are a product of our environment. If you study electromagnetic biofields, this invisible field, we are, that's why sometimes you can walk into a room and, and uh, there might be a bunch of happy people and all the are good, and then somebody else walks in and they're like totally dead. They're like, oh, they're like, really heavy, like they're so heavy, they feel drained. There's a lot of parents that are creating these really toxic environments at home, and then the kids are a result of that agitation. And it's, and it's unfortunate that we live in a culture where it's like, give them a pill, give them a pill, give them a pill. And really what it is, is these, just because they're little people doesn't mean that they don't experience stress. Okay? And then they're not getting the proper attention at home. And so as kids, that's what we see. We want to be seen, we want to be heard, we want to be validated, we want to be loved, we want to be understood. And if you aren't getting any of that stuff on a pretty regular basis, the chances of you being in a dissonance within self is highly likely. And when you got that much stress going on, how, when you got a lot going on in your life, and then you got to go to work and you need to focus, or you have to go to school and you need to take a test, right? You're an adult, you've got kids, you're taking your master's or whatever. How well can you focus? It's difficult. But yet these kids are not getting enough sleep, they're not getting enough love, they're, they're seen fighting, they're under this, they're, some of them are being abused and neglected. All this stuff, too. Research what it does to the brain. I mean, seriously, we have got the art children matter so much, and it really brings me a lot of life. It hurts my heart sometimes when I see how people are talking to children, especially now that I understand how the subconscious mind works. So I feel it's our responsibility as a community to really come in and try to be mentors to these kids and teach them this is what everybody does. No one knows how to process emotions properly, and then it gets trapped in the body and it creates dis-ease. Because when your mind is not at ease, if your heart is not at ease, your body does it no time. Okay, so it's still within the body. So adults are not being taught properly how to deal with emotions. We're not taught how to effectively communicate our, our feelings, and so then you're just like, Ugh, you know? And so I want to. Going back to that, I've already met, you know, when you start aligning with your purpose and your mission, the right people come into your space, and I keep meeting a lot of people in the education system and stuff, and they're coming to me like, oh, we need to do some project, we need to do some project. So it's just a matter of me putting together this, like, mindfulness thing, which, by the way, is going to be connected to helping with bullying. Okay, I want to make bullying, like, so not cool in schools. Like, I would have this vision of the, the villain and the superhero, because that's what I say. I'm a superhero for love. Everybody has this will. We can, like, learn how to love ourselves more and put more love into the world. Or we can just keep adding to the agitation, the hate, and the anger, the division, and all that stuff. You get to decide. And so I want kids to know, do you want to be a superhero or do you want to be a villain? This is what a villain looks like. This is what a superhero looks like. And y'all start getting real with yourselves. Which one are you showing up as? And that's how it is with us, too. And we all have the, the Joker and the Batman within us, and we get to decide which one we feed, and we have to recognize the other one. We do not want to shine. Know your dark side. Be friend your dark side. This is how we're going to end up eventually creating a new humanity and a new earth, is when we all start to take accountability and responsibility for how we are showing up in the world, how we're being. being. Your well-being will determine your being, your personality, is creating your reality, so if you don't like your reality, you need to check yourself. <laughs> Just saying. And I'm right there with you, so I have compassion. Can you talk a little bit about self-forgiveness? Because that's a big part of self-compassion. Yes, um, that's a heavy duty question, but it's a beautiful question. Self-forgiveness, uh, forgiveness in general. We have to be gentle with ourselves because it really is, as with anything else, um, healing is a process. And so first you have to ask yourself, what have you not forgiven yourself for? And then once you start to see what that is, it could be maybe like, for instance, myself, um, you know, I've experienced heartbreak, but I've also been the heartbreaker. And when I started going through this truth journey, I realized that you know, I kind of needed to atone for some things. And so um, I, I extended, I wrote letters. Sometimes if you can't reach out to the person, just writing out your feelings. Uh, journaling is really a beautiful, beautiful thing. But there's different ways that you can help yourself with that. But first it's just, 
I'm figuring out what are those things. And then asking yourself, how does it benefit me to hold on to this? And, and then you can list the pros and cons. And then, and then little by little, you'll you know, you start to work through it. And sometimes you need some assistance, and other things you can kind of just kind of, kind of get through uh, yourself. But don't ever be afraid to seek help with that. And also research what, uh, forgiveness and what it does to uh, your body. So then it kind of, like if you're uh, really depleted of energy or you get sick a lot and then you start to realize what, what not forgiving self, like guilt, what guilt does to the body, then all of a sudden you start to reframe it and see it from a different perspective and you're like, ooh, that's, there's a lot of booby traps in life and worry is another one. Get real clear about how much you're worrying, worrying because that Robs you of your vitality, and your vitality is your energy, and your energy is your life, and your life is where your creativity and your solutions and everything are going to come from. So, do you understand where I'm going to go with that? Okay, I hope I answered your question. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Anyone? Yeah, so this is how you guys can kind of help me with Rise Above. Okay, so Rise Above um, is part of the Miss Entrepreneur Role Model Search. I know it's kind of like a long mouthful, but that's the page. Uh, we call it Miss E Live now. <laughs> Miss E is a short version of it. And this uh, gentleman who created this about five years ago wanted to me to do some hosting, to interview some in, uh, entrepreneurs who are live to our broadcast, and then Facebook Live. Uh, and going to be tapping into their passions and purpose and really executing them and bringing them to life so that we can encourage others to do that. Um, also offering people the option to know how to connect with individuals that could potentially help them. The Gentleman's Corner, like I said, will be a new segment. I'm also going to have a musical artist, which is another reason why I feel like he and I are, past, are crossing in a more significant way so that because he knows so many artists. Um, Pete, there are so many people right now that are feeling the desire to share their testimonial, you know, and share their pain and how they overcame their pain and they're writing books and stuff like that. So I want to I promote those individuals' uh, work as well. So I'm thinking the way the format of the show is it's live, we cut to commercials, and I would love to be able to cut to people can send in their own little selfie and say, hi, I'm going to be so I wrote about this, blah, blah, blah. They can send us their videos, and instead of just cutting a commercial, I can cut to cut to that. I would love, like, then acts of kindness stories uh, to be submitted to us, too. So, again, they can video them or showing them acts of kindness or whatever the case may be. I, I really, even though this is a self love prescription, you guys, it's just a time for you to come and unwind. It's, and, and, and I, I give you guys information about your body so that you guys can learn how to become your own healers. Again, you have to restore yourself. <laughs> and you have to be mindful when you need that. And not be afraid and not be guilty to take that time out for yourself. So that's why, and I'm not the only one I'm sharing town. There's a lot of things that you guys can do. Uh, but I'm just being driven and compelled to create a space for people to come and just chillax, man, and just unplug all the responsibilities and ask and just come be with your breath. Your breath is like one of the most beautiful gifts that you've been given, and you can use it to learn how to be a whole king of sabi. I try to teach people how to be channels of their mind, mind hackers, and in order for you to be a master of your emotions, you need to learn how to use your breath. So that's another thing breathing and stretching and it's really nice. So 730, go to my Facebook page, Jamie, just search Jamie Terrazas, the mindfulness coach. I don't know if you all have a link or whatever. Or JamieTerrazas.com you can get the seven positive daily habits. These are seven things that I do. You can do them in literally seven minutes or less. And all these things are to help set an intention and keep your mind focused on what's good and healthy for you. Your mind, body, heart, and soul. So, I think we did it. Thank you so much.
Thank you so much. That was fire. Um, once again, this is HWC 2017 Holiday Writers Convention. Thank you guys for coming. Ideas are being shared powerfully. I have only two requests for you guys. Because as I age, I understand how certain things like money work. You know, I, I understand that I'm real and that everybody has money. This was a delusion that I didn't understand when I was younger because kids don't have money, but adults do. In reserve. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, I'm not asking personally for money, but there's a wonderful, I mean, I'll, I'll accept money. Why am I saying that? I'll accept it. No, it's sugar. But there's a wonderful lady, uh, Mrs. Santewa from ARW Collections here. She makes really great jewelry. I'm wearing the bracelet right there. I, I got this one a few minutes ago. It's legit. This is my power talisman. It's just, it's very cool. She centers it on, you know, African um, things. And I'm also Nigerian, it's my white household. But you don't have to be Nigerian to be able to use it as a power talisman. It's universal, I think. Yes, it's universal. So definitely <laughs> check her out. <laughs> I don't even, okay. Definitely check her out if you would get something from her. That is my request. Uh, I will catch you at the door on the way out, and there will be no exiting. You have to have one of these to be able to leave with no sugar. But that would be cool if you're so inclined uh, and your electricity is on, which means you have the money for extra stuff. And then also, um, huge round of applause for uh, Andy. <laughs> he's he's uh, uh, Andy Ray. Oh, I don't know if I don't need to say his whole last name or anything like that. But a uh, wonderful. Uh, I don't even know his position here. Manager, uh, chief in charge here at Brick and Blue Star. Definitely tip him, and, and uh, the more drinks you buy, the better. What I realized is that this, this is basically the, the holiday Christmas party for, for Project 4. That's what it seems like to me now. We have the hats and everything. That's what, so I'm super excited for next year already. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of a talk, and I hope you guys get to hear it. You're here now, so I think you may be here later based on probability, but before I go up, I'm going to uh, bring up one other excellent gentleman uh, who has a company here in San Antonio. Uh, he is visionary himself, and so his company is named Likewise. I didn't give you a chance to prepare. That's not how I do it. Um, he's launched a lot of stuff that I think is super beneficial for San Antonio. And I think San Antonio, what I love about it in creating media here is that we're on the bridge of really feeling like we are a city of power. A lot of people who do who live here, they're just very chill, so they don't feel the need to be over about it. They're like, oh yeah, I live in San Antonio, but this is like a massive city in size, and the culture is exceptionally deep. And for someone to create a brand around that is very fascinating. So I'd like to hear more, and that's what we're going to do right now. Um, so I'm going to bring up. Uh, none other, he's going to give us a seven minute talk and then we're going to throw some questions at him. And then after that, I'm going to do my talk. And after that, I think uh, I want us to mingle around these three ideas. If you talk to anyone else who has a business, think about these three things. The things that you need that other people can provide, that's super great. Things that you can collaborate on, whether it's videos, think about that. I'm obviously new to the video myself. Uh, and then the third thing, remember things that you need, videos, okay, and then things about business structures that you don't understand. So if it's about how to get your business to the next level, even just discussing those things amongst yourselves makes us more powerful um, as a community of creators, you know, getting those ideas out like, hey, I'm structuring my business in this way. We underestimate how important those things are um, to our ability to interact as companies, understanding what agreements we need to sign, to facilitate and speed our ability to do wonderful things together, which allows us to be more of a part of the network. You can think about the, I'm doing a talk in, in 20 minutes, we'll get there. <laughs> but right now, I'd like to bring up the wonderful Mr. Calvin McGee. Well, actually, so I believe, one idea that I have come up with actually is going to be involved in an app. Uh, you 
eventually I want to create an app uh, that can change the world. Um, I think that uh, with our new generation uh, and our younger generation, uh, like my mom has always told me, our generation has all the opportunity but no work ethic, where past generations have all the work ethic but no opportunity. Uh, so, with that being said, I believe that we have, our generation uh, has a great, uh, how do I want to say this, uh, a great body of opportunity around us uh, that we can, can reach out to. And the reason why I started was because I had a mentor. And uh, unlike others, I reached out for him, I seen him for him, uh, and I got the mentor that I was uh, trying to be. Obviously, being somebody that is inspired to be, um, and the app that I would like to create is going to be dictated off of creating a network to where people are able to uh, reach out to the people that they didn't think they could reach out to on a platform to where they can get levels of uh, motivation or ideas or anything like that to where they're able to touch those people in a way that they wouldn't if they didn't have this type of uh, app. Uh, and uh, actually, I think uh, my school, my university, uh, Houston Tillis University in Austin, Texas, actually does this thing uh, every year during South by Southwest where they have a uh, like a tech program to where they basically have an app ideas and app creations at the university. I forget what the name of it's called. Uh, I'm so upset that I forgot the name. But anyway, uh, basically, uh, whenever you're trying to solve a problem, they tell you to list three things down to where you're trying to solve uh, an issue. So, for example, if Kenya uh, Ken said, how, how do you think your ideas will change the world? You know, I'll list three things. And the first thing would be the problem. So, what is the problem that we're trying to address? The second thing being, what are the issues with that problem? So, for example, if we're looking at a computer that has a problem, what are the issues with this computer? Is it charged up? Uh, is there something wrong with it? Uh, what are the issues dealing with that computer? And then thirdly, uh, being the solution. Uh, the solution is obviously the, the answer for the problem and the issues with this computer or with the problem that we're facing in the world or whatever that may change the world. So I say that the app that I was creating, or I am creating, or I'm going to create, uh, will involve those three things. It will involve the problem that I feel we're dealing with, the issues that I feel that are affecting that problem, and then my solution, which is my app. Uh, but I didn't know exactly what else uh, that I should be discussing. Uh, but uh, if uh, can you can you help me out? Yes, so do I just continue to talk about? You have seven minutes. I don't know where you are right now. But. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, you can stop early and switch the questions if you're done. I mean, it's, yeah. I, I, I guess I will. Uh, get to the question part because obviously my idea is something that I'm going to go sacred until it's uh, available. Not just but, uh, uh, what else can I talk about though? Uh, don't, uh, talking about the problems that uh, I believe, I think something he touched on or something he was talking about, uh, about I guess taking the three days that you would need in terms of your business, uh, what would you need to Improvise your business uh, can be a lot of things. Uh, I believe that we need to connect more, we need to uh, pass the baton more. Uh, basically, if you have knowledge in your brain, if you have things that people never have dealt before, or never dealt with before, or things that you face in your life or through your business that can uh, push society forward, I believe that you need to pass that baton. I believe that you need to. Pass your knowledge and everything that you, your resources and all the connections that you had to the person that's behind you. Uh, and that's another thing that my app actually deals with, which is basically passing the baton to the next generation and allowing them to be able to uh, endure or uh, basically receive the things and the successes that you have received in your business or anything that you are uh, pursuing. Uh, uh, I guess I'll give you the rest of the minutes to talk about what I do. Uh, I guess uh, my name is Calvin. Again, Calvin McGee. I am a entrepreneur here in San Antonio. I have my own company called Visionary Entertainment. Uh, I have 
all of my business structure behind Jay-Z, not because I'm a rapper, but because I love his business uh, mindset. Jay-Z has this thing called Rock Nation, where Rock Nation is an umbrella organization over certain businesses that you own, like Rock Nation Music, Rock Nation Sports, uh, and that's kind of where I've set my business on to where Missionary Entertainment is a parent company to several businesses that I own, which is Cal Camp Productions, Game Top Skills Training, San Antonio's very own clothing, um, and Cal Camp Sports. Um, and basically, what I do is I'm a full service organization that hosts uh, different uh, management skills and, and, and consulting ideas through those different lines of uh, entertainment, so music, sports and management uh, are the things that I kind of affect and do what I like to do best, which is manage and uh, give my ideas and my creative uh, geniuses to anybody else that asks about what it is that I do or how they can get their business going. Now, mind you, I know that I don't have all the answers, but if you give me a business plan and you give me an idea, uh, I use my visionary thoughts to kind of bring what you are thinking about to life. Uh, so our model for vision entertainment is bring me your eyes, it will bring you vision. Uh, because basically a lot of people, uh, like you saying, is like on the on the on the edge of doing something, but they just need somebody else's perspective to kind of bring that to life. Uh, and a little bit about my what I'm doing actually now, uh, I'm wearing a sweater um, from San Antonio's very own clothing. Uh, it's starting really from an idea that I had a long time ago where San Antonio needs to be proud of the products that we produce. We have a lot of people that are doing great things for San Antonio. I have a couple of friends of mine that actually play professional sports, uh, which is basketball in the NFL, uh, in the country and outside the country. And basically, I started to think of what can I do to provide a platform to where San Antonio can be more prideful of what we have, what we've produced here in San Antonio. Uh, and I came up with the great idea of San Antonio's very own. It's not like Houston, it's not like Dallas, but Dallas is very prideful, Houston is very prideful in Texas. But San Antonio really doesn't have that sense of pride to where you walk around and somebody asks where you're from, you say San Antonio. A lot of people do not say San Antonio. A lot of people probably say that little town around San Antonio, which is still San Antonio. Uh, but I created this brand to produce that sense of pride to everybody. Uh, that we, we're trying to uh, create a, a vibe for San Antonio. And we're actually having a fashion show on December 22nd uh, at Second Baptist Community Center. It's like right next to the Carver Library, which is like right, right across from um, the at t Center as well. And uh, we're having a fashion show on December 22nd. We had a commercial um, on my Facebook that I had posted like at least a month ago now. And unfortunately, I am not the person that has all the tremendous likes and the tremendous following that others do. Uh, but when we posted this Facebook video, I only asked for like 100 shares and like over a thousand likes. And over like a three day period, it has started reaching numbers that I never thought it would. So like that third day, it reached 6,000 views, about 200 likes, like four days from then, it was like 8,000 views. And I'm just like, wow, this is really uh, blown up. We had a whole bunch of shares. Uh, and like, I checked here today, and we have like over 600 shares. We have over like 16,000 views. And that kind of is what led me to have our fashion show on December 22nd, just basically building the momentum that we've been getting from the commercial that we've posted. Uh, we actually are about to have some other opportunities open up for us. Uh, I'm probably going to be on a couple of news stations talking about our fashion show uh, because other people have seen our commercials, other people have seen our website. If you're looking to see our website, our website is visionary, ENTSA.com. That is the website from my brand. Uh, you will also see on there my team, people that I work with, uh, events that I've thrown on here in San Antonio. And again, that's visionary, the way you spell visionary, V-I-S-I-O-N-A-R-Y-E-N-T-S-A.com. My Instagram is at who can cow can. Uh, my Twitter is at who can cow can. Uh, funny story, uh, when I was in college, actually when I was younger, 
this is how I came up with Ken Cow Can. Is because when I was younger in middle school, my uncles and my aunties, uh, my mom, of course, would come to my games. And I played basketball all throughout my whole life, all the way up to college. And they would come to my games, and I'd be at the free throw line, and I'm shooting free throws. They say, Who can? Cow can. Who can? Cow can. And that kind of stayed with me throughout my whole life. So when I had to persevere through situations or when I was doubtful of things, I've always asked myself, who can cow can? And that kind of has been my tagline now since when I was in high school. And uh, it's funny because, like I said, the who can cow can meant a lot to me. It actually was, like I said, something that I had to say all the time to myself. People were doubting things that I wanted to do or doing different things. Uh, I'm actually going to create a scholarship called the Who Can, You Can Scholarship, and that's going to be given back to my university, which I graduated. It's not going to be your typical student, uh, not your typical 3.0 or 3.5, 4.0 student. I'm trying to get the student to tell a story with. I want to get the student that's barely making it past the first semester and contemplating on should I move again, or should I switch schools, or should I just give up? And I want to be that person that kind of creates that story with them to let them know that when somebody or when you're met with adversity, I want you to just ask yourself, who can? I want you to say, you can, whoever you, whatever your name is. So uh, I'm all about giving back. And, like I'm 25, I'm already thinking about giving back. So it's like I, I haven't even met my goals, which I would like to attain. But I know that there's people that are before me and more than me that are contemplating on those certain things. And I just feel like with, with the way our momentum and the way our young generation is moving, we need to give back sooner, right? We need to be able to turn right back around. And if I hit a successful uh, uh, win streak, I want to hurry up and give back as much as I can and what I can, right? Because I can't give that back all, I can't give back all of what I attain when I pass away. So when I get the things that I get, I'm, I'm always, uh, in a rush to sow the seed into somebody else that's less fortunate than I am. Uh, and that's what I think my app is going to actually succeed in and thrive in because it's going to give people a platform to reach people uh, that you never thought you'd be able to reach. Uh, and I'll just give you a quick example. Like a couple of people that I'm inspired by, like Floyd Mayweather, uh, P. Diddy, um, Steve Jobs. I love Apple. Uh, they're not really, you know, people have argued that their phone and all the stuff that's going on with Apple right now. But unfortunately, their business structure is so beautiful, it's not even fun. Like, I would just say to everybody in here, one thing that I learned from Apple is the fact that Apple doesn't ask questions about what you like, right? They probably do surveys throughout their years of creation, but in terms of when they turn on that next year of business, when they're saying, all right, we're about to produce the iPhone 8 and iPhone 10, they're not asking you if you like the artillery core. They're not asking you like the headphones, and they're not asking you how much stuff you have on the phone. They're creating a structure to where they're putting their business on you to where you're forced to move on. You're not able to just stay with the iPhone 3 that came out in whatever year it came out in. You're forced to move forward, and then through them forcing it, not saying they're just forcing it down your neck, but it almost feels like that because then all your friends, get the iPhone 8 or iPhone 10, you're like, oh, you still got the iPhone 7, you're like, aw. And you know, so it puts you in that set where it's like, you're forced to say, you know what, I, if I want to keep up with the Joneses, I need to get the iPhone 8, and I need to get the iPhone 10. And I think that with my business structure, I use that, I use that, uh, that structure, but not in a more, not in an aggressive way. Like, I'm not forcing my brand on anybody, but I am saying, this is the new brand, this is the new iPhone. This is something that you need, and when you get it, you put it on, you're going to feel like it. You're gonna, you, you turn on your iPhone 10, you're going to feel like, oh my God, this is something new. And so when I do my business and I'm promoting my business, I always want to uh, emphasize the fact that I'm trying to push something forward. I'm trying to tell you that, hey, you might like the hoodie with this, you might like the hoodie with that, but if you put on this hoodie, it's going to be a whole different vibe. It's going to be a whole different structure. So. Uh, like I said, I was inspired by Floyd Mayweather, with the big Steve Jobs, their business and everything like that. And like I said, when I said I see my mentor, I think there's a whole bunch of cowards out here, right? I think there's a whole bunch of cowards that's just needing an opportunity. Or 
needed somebody to talk to. They needed somebody to pull them aside and say, hey, this is what you need to do. And where a lot of people uh, fail to realize is that a lot of people don't really, uh, how would I say this? A lot of people feel uncomfortable reaching out to people that are successful and getting the slap back, like, oh, you're with me, you're not there yet, you're not this, you're not that. And I feel like the app that I'm going to create allows that platform to skip that. It's almost like a Tinder, almost, to where Tinder subtracts the whole meeting platform, right? Tinder says, you know what, I don't have to meet this person in public to tell this person I'm attracted to them, right? It puts you in the space to where you're able to just tell a person you're, you're attractive or you think I'm attractive by just swiping left and swiping right. My app is kind of like that, to where it's like, it, it, it subtracts that, that being scared. It subtracts that I'm nervous to walk up to this person and say, you know what, I actually love your business and I would like to be a part of it. What can I do to help you? It, it, it subtracts that and it just allows you to reach that person and tell that person exactly how you feel but not being able to uh, go back home and say, oh my God, I tried to talk to Kenny the other day and he told me I wasn't good enough. Right? But uh, basically, man, this. Like I said, I think that is something that I would do um, to change the world as a relationship to uh, answering this and uh, this question. Um, and I don't know yet yeah, exactly. So if there's any questions, uh, I am more than willing to answer that. What's that? Uh, so, I have my business plan, I have the, uh, create, uh, the creation done, um, it's really about finding tech people that, that knows what they're doing. <laughs> uh, I am all about quality, I am all about um, timing, uh, which means that I'm not the person that just says, oh, this idea is going to be taken in a couple of months, let me hurry up and do this the wrong way. I'm all about, look, what I'm thinking is going to happen, and I believe in it, so it's all about timing for me, but everything in terms of my ideas already on paper, uh, already packed, everything like that is just waiting on opportunity to get with some developers that really know what they're doing, and so it can be provided the way I would like it to be provided to the masses. Do my thing. The biggest question that we ask each other is, 
what is going to stop us from getting where we want to get? And whatever those answers were, I put on my mirror, right? So I would say, what will stop me from getting to 30 being a millionaire? What will stop me from being successful in, 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 in my successful mindset, right? My first thing, getting a girl pregnant. Boom. That's step one. <laughs> that, that's one. I can't get no girl pregnant before I attain my success. What's step two, right? Pray every day, or no, don't, like basically, pray every day. Do what you gotta do every day, right? And I started writing things on my, my mirror that basically would stop me. I'm like, what things will stop me from getting, going to jail, right? Doing drugs, not doing this, or not doing that. And it was almost like seven things that every time I brush my teeth, can't get no girl pregnant today. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or even with you like, and it's like, it's certain things that you just can't do. If you really want to be, and like I said, my success is different from anybody else's success, but whatever you call success, what's going to stop you from getting there and be completely honest, right? I know if I lay up and I'm, I'm sleeping and I, I have to get up and, and, and I have to practice these things and try to be successful, if I know that this thing is going to prevent me from being successful, I can't do it. And that's what's going to scare you from anything because then you'll go to work and you're like, hey, like, did I, did I drink a little bit too much last night? Or did I do this a little bit too much? And then you'll start questioning yourself to where you'll have then a, a guilty conscience to where you're about to do something. You're like, oh, God, that's going to stop me from that's gonna stop me from being successful. It ain't, it's not your mom. It's not your dad. It's not your best friends. It's really your own little tablet. And your phone is just saying, Calvin, you better not do this today. Or Calvin, you better not do that today. And, and I will also say surround yourself with people that believe in what you're, what, what, what exactly it is that you're, you're thinking. Like an intimate belief in you, not a, a belief in what you're doing, right? And I'm saying that to say, everybody that works with me, so if you ever do visit my website, you'll see about five people on my website that I'm working with. I don't pay none of them, right? But at the same time, the only reason why they're helping me is because they had an intimate belief and what I do, and what I'm doing. And just like my whole saying is, or what everybody else, everybody else says, is basically, you know, when you're doing something that you enjoy so much, it doesn't feel like work, right? Because you love to do it. And everybody that's a part of my team that are helping me out actually love exactly what I'm doing. Now, I might not get them to love it the way I love it, or I'm going to stay until 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning, creating ideas and thinking of things that we can do. But they are going to be up in the morning saying, Calvin, they do. Or Calvin, we get that done. You know, I've kind of built this type of vibe around us to where it's, it's always going to be quality over quantity, right? Uh, and that being, when you have a quality anything, the quantity is going to come, right? So anything that you do, if it's quality involved in whatever it is that you're doing, the quantity will be there. The people will be there. People will attend. People will do whatever it is because what you're providing is a quality uh, source. Uh, but hopefully I answered that question though, because that really meant a lot to me in terms of where I am now. Like people literally have met, met me at times to where I really couldn't get love, I really couldn't quit, and I, I didn't, right? I didn't. And it, and it makes me, it makes, when you, when you get through certain situations of adversity and things of that nature, it kind of separates you from if you ever thought about that again. Right? Like I listen to Kobe Bryant, I listen to all these people that basically say the same thing. Like, why are you even, like, once when, you're met with that adversity of like, oh, well, Kobe's gonna retire, Kobe's gonna, I know what that feels like. I'm never gonna go back to that. Right? I'm never gonna do that again because I know what it felt like. And when, you, when you're met with adversity, you're going through whatever it is you're going through, and you come to a point to where it's like, what's gonna, again, what's gonna stop me from getting where I wanna get? I think that's gonna work. That's going to be what kind of calls your answer to the same, well, I'm about to cross this bridge because, you know, if I, like I said, if I'm able to address it and I fall into that pool, that's, I'm going to be in the pool of everybody else. And I'm always being about separation. And I've never been shy on separate, being afraid to separate yourself. Right? So don't be afraid of being that person that's really doing out there grinding, 
going in the rain and people looking at you like, oh, what are you doing? The girl, what are you doing? Whatever. Like, I care what you think, right? Because like I, was I was talking about that the other day, like, Jay-Z was once on the corner selling CDs. And he didn't care what nobody thought of him. And now, he, you have to buy everything that he sells, right? And, and that's kind of what I look at everybody. Like, Steve Jobs was once in a garage. And, I mean, unfortunately, he passed away. But look at what he has now. Look at what he would have had. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. People all was somewhere before they are where they are now. And I think that if you look at the people that you look up to and look at, you'll find that answer in everybody that you look at. Somebody was doing something before they were doing what it is that they're doing now. So, hopefully, like I said, hopefully. Oh. Well, again, uh, if you can, my, like I said, Instagram is at Can, Cal Can. My Facebook is Calvin uh, My website is visionaryentsa.com. Like I said, we're having a fashion show on December 22nd at Second Baptist uh, uh, Community Center. Like I said, like, right across the street from the AT&T Center. Uh, so again, like, hopefully we can all network and get with each other in the future. Uh, but thank y'all for having me, right? Yes. Cool. Thank you so much, Calvin. That was awesome. So, um, thank you guys for coming. Clap for yourselves. Super cool. We're also going to be doing this tomorrow and Thursday at Mount uh, Islam, which is a new art gallery that's opening downtown. Should be pretty cool. Uh, it's going to be from 3 p.m. to mid uh, 11 p.m. And then we'll also be doing it on Saturday at Alamonte Sounds, which is somewhere over there. And that's going to be a lot of fun. So, this is the first night. Um, very great, very great. So, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, a presentation because I have some fun new stuff. I like the app that you talked about. That was great. I think Kevin's about to restart the camera. I'm going to ask you for a favor, Kevin, if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't mind, um, for me, that's selfish. It seems like it's been a big thing for you guys, too. Yeah. I think I had some thank yous to do, but I already did all of them. Um, so, yeah. I'm just going to do this little presentation thing. I hope you guys enjoy it thoroughly. And I really liked how that turned out with, uh, with Calvin. That was so great. It was Jamie. I think I had smaller times available for them, and I think like two people didn't come. They just turned into two really cool long form keynote keynote kind of type Q and A's, which I think is going to be really fun. So I look forward to watching the footage and stuff. Uh, HWC 2017 footage. So you're going to have to use three fingers. This is a Mac MacBook, and then you're going to move the mouse onto the thing and you swipe with the three fingers. Does that sound like it's going to be? First you have to, because it's like the screen on to the left of the yeah, Apple products are kind of hard to use, so bear with me. How's it going? What's it saying? <laughs> I should have given you a tutorial first. I was like, It'll probably work out. Very cool. Well, I'll get into the idea a little bit. Um, what, what, I, what a lot of this year has been has been one of the really coolest experiences in entrepreneurship. For me, uh, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm kind of a new entrepreneur. I've been doing it almost all my life. It's very much related to who I am and how I see myself as a human being. Um, but this last year, okay, at a very sort of, if you hit keynote, not that this is the keynote, that's the app in Apple, though. So that's what it's called. I don't want to make it seem like I'm being pretentious. But yeah, I'll we'll just click the thing that says, yeah, almost that one. It's very similar. Maybe I should just, I'm going to do it with you guys. You don't want it. You don't care at all.
tours, uh, the distribution and the shipping, and the, the partner thing, there's sponsorship, uh, retail opportunities and employees. So the idea of the orbit is leveling up your ability to engage with um, the people who are in your group. And again, you have to come to the workshop because I like to personalize it for people, but hopefully I can kind of personalize some of these ideas in like a Q&A after this. So let's skip to the next thing. This is how I manifested a lot of my um, things over the course of this year. Hi2 is a teacher company that I'm wearing right now. They make these awesome t-shirts. Uh, and I was a little part of the guy who makes the t-shirts. And that's the way the messaging is really good, which is why I like partnering with him. This shirt says Global Citizen. That shirt, that one right there, it's a black shirt, which I put on a black background, which was ingenious. Uh, but <laughs> that is actually on the shirt. So it says, what truly matters, skin color religion. That's one of the shirts. And so I'm really into that. How you treat others, that's high too. And then I made my time machine, which goes along with my workshops, and it's kind of like a guide um, through your day. Because mindset and the way that you structure yourself, and the way you approach your day, is a lot like time travel. And I have an open fascination with time travel. That's why that's called time machine. That's my awesome. I had another picture that shows it as real things. That looks like I've never built a real one, but there's. So other ones. Okay. <laughs> the next slide is idea parties, which is something that I came up with because um, I realized that collaboration between brands weren't happening fast enough. And I hope you can check out Project 4.tv so you can see a little bit more about um, what's the, what that is like. And then it gets into the idea of sharing um, ideas beyond your city and getting more into the orbit. Which uh, I'm going to bring some composition up here after this next slide. I'm going to talk about it a little bit and hopefully you check it out. Um, the next thing on the slide right there is the Bravo Tipping app, which is a company that I started working with recently. And it would be super dope if you guys downloaded uh, this app. The Bravo Tipping app is pretty dope. It lets you tip local entrepreneurs. And by reaching out to them, it's sort of a collective way of saying there's enough people in San Antonio who believe in community want to do cool things that you can, um, that we can reach out to these brands who are outside of our regular um, orbit, our regular city, um, and things like that. I don't know what that means, and things like that. But that's it on the Bravo Tipping app. I'm going to leave that image up there so that hopefully you follow them, and then I'm going to get a little bit into some of this expansion tour magic, and I'm going to let Kevin take it away because I think he's really cool, but I'm going to start with it. About a month ago, me and Kevin started. Oh, there was one other thing that I wanted Kevin to do. Okay, Kevin, go back to the computer really fast. <laughs> this was actually almost the coolest thing of the entire presentation, and I forgot it. He's somewhere in between top and bottom. Let's see. Aha! <laughs> do you think you can move over to the next uh, thing? Right up there, very quick. But I'm ready to the. You swipe it with three fingers. Do a three finger swipe on the notepad. Uh, one more time. One more time. Oh, click it. Do three fingers, just swipe to the left. Yeah, one more time. Again. Perfect. Okay. So uh, it kind of all led me to building this, uh, this 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 platform through idea parties. Project Four, you can check it out. We make influencer media, we make videos, we make blog posts, and things like that. Idea parties is um, our way of streamlining some of the brand connections and then the influencers' um, desire to get out of their city. So if you check it out, you can kind of use this like a website, CHWC. Um, that's a little ad. I made all my own banner ads now because I realized that putting ads in ads actually like the conversion just isn't worth it unless you're creating media for the entire world, which will allow you to siphon off a small portion of the traffic. And then, anyway, it's not important. That's the working behind that. But I'm really hyper on community. So if I'm getting 30 people who are coming to the website through me, is it worth it for me to get 0 0.001 cents for them? on this ad, or is it worth it for that one person who clicks on it to land on another page which is going to be hyper relevant to them. So that's why 
I make my own banner ads. But anyway, I just started doing that a little bit. You know, oh, that was cool. Okay, <laughs> go back down a little bit. But um, on this page, I showcase some of the things that we're doing um, with idea parties. Um, and then I say, these are available for other companies that can have their things on there. And there's tour dates, you can see some of the merchandise that we have. But if you go up to the top, this is the part that I'm really excited about. And this is really cool that I'm going to be sharing with more people. Because as we've been going out, other influencers have been, other entrepreneurs and musicians, they've been asking, hey, you know, how can we go with you? So I added a little functionality in that direction. So if you click on the industry directory button, very cool. You'll see that um, there's two options. One, which is build an event, which is for venues, brands, it doesn't really matter what it is that you're doing, but it gives you the opportunity to create an event in a super simple way. Like imagine you have a, a t-shirt company, right? And you want some local influencers to come into your t-shirt company and to do a small open mic, which I love the belief that creating events is the highest form of advertising and connection. Honestly, you can sponsor a Facebook post, um, which is cool, and I still think it has its place in the market, but I believe getting one or two real bodies, I think it translates in conversion to like 50 or so people. I think the value is just so much more when you have people in a room. Um, there's other stuff down there. If you click the build and event button, just so they can kind of see what it does, especially you guys watching on video. I should have recorded what Kevin was doing, but anyway. Um, you can build an event, you can select the attendance right now, there's only two options. Um, you can kind of check out the options a little bit. Oh, add it. Check the select attendance. <laughs> the select attendance. Okay. Right there. Underneath. Oh. Well, there you go. It says you have to be an idea partners member to join, which is cool. Now you know how much that costs. I didn't want anyone to see. It actually has the back. It's fine. Do you want to go back? Oh, sweet. That's perfect. <laughs> but uh, in general, you saw what it looks like when you can build an event, and then the other option is to go on tour, which is get to see that really quick is for different influencers. We have set tour dates because in December we're going to a certain number of cities and then also in January we're going to go to a certain number of cities. So there will be a, a number of different selections that you can choose. So I'm really excited um, for you guys to be able to check that out as, as entrepreneurs, as vendors, or as musicians or as poets to be able to join us on the road when we hit some of these other cities. I think it's going to be super awesome. That was basically my presentation. I wanted to bring Mr. Composition down to chat a little bit about his idea on expansion and what he's been doing through Dab Troll. So he's going to do that and then we're just going to mingle the night away. And I thank you, you guys for coming to the HWC 2017 first one. Next year will be way... It's going to be equally dope. The dopeness will just be spraying over our quantity of people. This is, yeah, this was actually, and I think everyone bought, I think only you were the only one who didn't pay the 50,000 entrance. Yeah, everyone else paid the fee. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Great stuff. But, um, yeah, I hope I get to see you guys tomorrow at La Mesa. This has been a really fun way to end the year out. And uh, I hope you check out Kevin's stuff too. I, I, I didn't even mention him. I saw Claude Devlin. Well, yeah, only like three people who haven't met him before. But for you three guys, I hope you definitely check out Santiago's stuff. My brother B is here, and uh, like me, because we have the same parents, he's also in Nigeria. So I'm sure you're having a hard time even staying away from me. The table with all this African stuff. He was actually born in Nigeria. He was the only one of my siblings who barely at all left. I'm like, okay, too much information probably. That's true. Okay. But then also, just the composition, he's a great author and stuff like that. So I'm going to get to check some of his stuff out 
on the line and things like that. But uh, Kevin, if you just want to explain a little bit on your idea of what expansion tour is, I'll get in line too, it would be awesome. And yeah, how does that sound? Tie in some Dab Troll stuff too. Hello, hello. My name is Kevin, and uh, my artist name is Mr. Composition. And um, yeah, we are doing this expansion. And uh, originally it started off from us just going out and hitting a couple of events. I came here with poetry, I do hip hop, and I'm also an author. And as we were going to these different places, we were thinking of the idea of expand, expansion, and how it you know, ties to even the healing factor of things in a mental, emotional, physical way. Um, to where you just expand by going to new places and doing things. Um, not that you wouldn't, but on a different aspect when you change sceneries and uh, you go to places you've never performed before. And you're able to expand as far as um, just awareness of what's even out there or the ability to even maneuver through without the traditional sense of booking. And so with expansion and what I do with my company, Dabtro Creations, is it's a short for Dabble Trolls, or so troll that dabbles in many things. And so um, trolls usually get a bad rap. Um, there's only a few times that I've seen trolls that were actually um, positive, which were the little troll dolls with the crazy hair. And then I think that in uh, Frozen, the trolls were actually nice in Frozen. Other than that, they depicted as evil. But the origin of trolls, when doing a little bit of research, you can see that there's a duality with everything. There's good and bad. So you don't really hear about the good aspects of trolls. You hear the trolls like trolling on the internet and things like that. And so I decided to make the positive aspect. Wise control, a troll that does many things because I personally do not, I'm not a one trick pony type of thing, and so I like many different things traveling, music, writing, um, film, camera work, just anything creative. And so, with combination, it originally started with um, getting not wanting to put my own things into one category or in multiple categories and have a bunch of different um, social media handles for my music and then my books and then camera and all that stuff. So I was just like, I need something to just box it all together. And so after developing that and creating it for myself, I noticed the need for other people and being a platform like an online retail and being able to have vendors and creators who uh, don't have an online store be able to vent through my store and just have this hub for uh, local creators and artists, artists and authors and things like that. And so with the expansion tour, we want to basically take everybody with us. Even if you physically cannot go, your products, your sponsorship, your presence can still travel with us and so that's what you know we're breaking down as far as with the expansion um a growth into planets and things like that and you know when jupiter came into orbit i would say in october yes scorpio um yes month of scorpio and um jupiter's a lot of the planet's traits was it's an expansive, it's a big planet, and it expands as far as um, your thoughts, solution, and things like that. And in order to expand, you kind of got to push from what you feel is your contained self, you know, and just pushing. You feel like you may be super small, but the expansion lets you know that, oh, there's another level to this. And, you know, if you think of the expansion pack, like an N64 was always an additional level of awesome things that you can do and little, um, little do like that. 
And so that's what this expansion tour is as well. It's like an expansion pack of creativity and just awareness. And with that, you know, just for the ability to be able to do this um, on our own, we live in a day and age where there is no middleman. It's just what it is that you can actually go out and do. You know, no one, you know, you can't wait anymore and expect for, you know, that manager, you got to just go out and get it. So that's pretty much what we are doing with the expansion tour and Dabtro Creations in combination with Project Forward. <laughs> So I got to use this time to do some fun things, to have a little idea party while we're here. Everybody's wasted. Wait, hold on. This is being recorded. Everybody is engaging in the fruits of text and truth. But anyway, I'd like to use this time to kind of like to, to do a little idea party. It's, it's my idea. Let's fill up some of these empty seats with some fun ideas. I'd love to. Yeah, I'm doing it. I'd love to hear some, some fun ideas that other people are working on, and I don't know where you kind of feel stuck within this game. Yeah. Oh, shush. Sure, sure. I guess we could totally do that. You know what? Let's do that. Let's fill in these, let's fill in these seats right here. That would be fun. Lena Graham will do it. She's like, I wouldn't have drank this. <laughs> These capsules are amazing. This is like almost a lot. This is pretty great. <laughs> this is, this is oh man, this is a legit idea. This is fun. Yeah. Cool. Maybe we should start that one on the other side. Chip, ooze, and crackle pop. Kari, do you want to jump in on this? Wow. We got space. Oh, this is fun. This is unexpected. That's how you feel. See what you guys are missing out. This is. The battery is almost gone now. Uh, okay. I'll watch it. I got it here. Okay. We'll do that. Alright. All right. That's fine. You'll represent. The future Californians were going to attend some space. You've been invited. He doesn't invite me. I know. The last time she went over to our house, I didn't attend the consequences were that. <laughs> Because the, the other battery is not done. <laughs> okay, thank you. Cool. Oh, okay, very cool. So this will be a fun dab troll exclusive right here. Check. Okay, so yeah, I'd love to hear some ideas that you guys got coming up um, and what, what, where you're at and things like that. Let's throw some. Let's throw some ideas. I am a, I'm a singer a, and a poet. Here, let's switch. Oh. Yeah. My name is Lena, yeah. and uh, I'm a singer and a poet, and I'm working on my first EP right now. Be dropping the first single before the end of the year and releasing shortly. Um, the new year comes, we're working on a couple of events in January and February, and um, I have, with, oh, sorry, <laughs> Mr. Dabchel right here, Mr. Composition, I have been inspired to put my uh, lyrics into like a lyric chapbook, and, um, What would you say drives you to create your ideas right now? Um, it's more of like expression of self and channeling like Jamie was saying, like channeling, using like the turmoil to kind of, um, you know, release that, that uh, 
stress. Is, okay. That's what we was seeing. Very cool. And you know, and more and more sharing with people and seeing what people need to hear and what people, you know, making people feel good and connecting with people. Very cool. Hello, my name is Asante Masakopa, and I am the founder and the creator at ARW Collection. Um, ARW stands for Ancestral Legal Wraps, and that is where I try to perform operations also. Um, I know a lot of the great most of the drug use of my culture where we didn't come from and we have been friends. And uh, I really I love it. Everything about it. The color, the culture, the everything. And um, I just did further and I know what I need this as far as inspiration um, on the pieces to make. How do you use uh, creating as a form of healing? Yeah, 